Fuck. Ugh. A little late on that. Damn. Were you guys on last week? No. I was not. When the first time? We're getting rid of Buckers. Buckers is no longer my favorite what? plushie. Spam Man is. <laughs> Where do you even get a spam plushie? Hey, I was at the uh, Southeast Game Exchange. It's like this. They rented out the entire uh, Greenville uh, Convention Center. Dude, just like nothing but like vendors just selling like retro video games and shit. And you saw and, that uh, and you're like, that's made for me. A bunch of people selling uh, pu plushies and stuff. Like one dude had like literally like a hundred different types of Pokemon plushies. Oh my God. And then I saw the spam plushie. <laughs> <laughs> and this was like literally the first thing I bought while I was down there. Hello, welcome to Shrimp Hours. I was Number waiting for him to reveal the hole in the back. One hundred and four. <laughs> <laughs> Tip it up. Uh, hi, I'm yeah. Drive Through. I'm here. Slaps here. Rusty's here. I think this is the first time we ever had a, a like two episodes in a row where there's only one person who's been on both of them. Uh, but we got we got the old men back uh, in case y'all missed them. The boys are back <laughs> down for a Monday show, I guess. Uh, did y'all watch NASCAR last weekend? Chicago Street Course. Uh, I guess we'll start to talk about that. I firstly want to say I'm so thankful that we finally got an Xfinity race on the Street Course because uh, the one last year that got yeah, rained out was nice. really sad and it was based. That's the Xfinity car. Larson and SVG just going at it. Like, yeah. like, like, like lap two, they brawl. just immediately just like <laughs> start going at it. And I, yeah, I was, was convinced cool. that uh, Ty Gibbs just sitting there in third. I was like, they're going to fuck it, and then he's going to win, and I'm going to be upset. I'm glad Shane Vegas Bergen got it done. He did. Can I, can I rant about something real quick? I know we're only two minutes into the show. I mean, it's but the fact that it's podcast, so I mean, <laughs> we're just along for the ride. The fact that it's been a year and these dudes still keep saying SVG genuinely bothers me so much, like more than it should. Because I look at old Supercars broadcasts, they say his name just like everyone else's name. It feels like, uh, like mildly racist, or it's just lazy <laughs> Americans. Where it's like, oh, Shane Van Gisbergen's too many syllables. And it's literally, they either say, like, they either make the point and they call him, like, and Shane Van Gisbergen, like, they say the whole thing, or they just go SVG, SVG. Like, just say Van Gisbergen. It's not that hard. It, like, like just just take each dude and stand in front of a mirror and for, you know, 15 times just say Shane Van Gisbergen, Shane Van Gisbergen, Shane Van Gisbergen. It's not hard. No. It's, it's, it's no. just, he's the best it's goddamn weird. driver in the world. Yeah, like, just say, how do you not know his name? Dude, there's... There were a, a couple more like legendary flubs. I think Jeff Burton is the worst at it. Like he <laughs> he struggles every goddamn time. It's not hard. It's really not. I I blame Emporia, Virginia Public Schools. <laughs> <laughs> I just I don't. I, it, it bothers me. It bothers me so much. I the, I, uh, I guess I'm the, the only NBA one because I haven't seen anyone else talk about it. With the with the player, they call him SGA, and that makes me want to jump off a cliff because he's also a superstar, and they just can't say his name. Like just, just learn how to say it. It's your job. <laughs> yeah, dude. God damn it. Ugh. Yeah, that pissed me off. Yeah, um, not gonna lie, I kind of wanted to turn off the broadcast when um, Briscoe took out uh, SVG. <laughs> like I, he's the only reason to watch. I mean, I mean, it, it was a good show overall. But it's like I love when he's like manhandling that car at that track because nobody comes close to him at yeah. that place. It's so yeah. cool. he's just he's just the best at it. And I I'd only turned the broadcast on uh, just like at the end of stage one, basically. So I watched them pace for like ten minutes, go out there, do half a lap. I think Isbergen gets wrecked out. Uh, <laughs> Bubba gets turned and, and Briscoe sends it into the fence and they put it out again and then they pace for like 20 minutes and then they just take like a three hour long break <laughs> and then finally get back at it. Yeah, I, uh, I had to stop watching. Uh, I saw that Alex Bowman won like after I got done watching Hot D because for the, the second week in a row, like NASCAR like went over into like uh, HBO dropping Hot D at 9 p.m. I'm like, dude, they started the race at five. Why? Why is it so it, late? The NBC did the IndyCar race and then the Chicago Street race. Nobody back, watches back. the IndyCar race. Where, where were they this week? 
Mid Ohio. <laughs> Dude, Were they? I thought they were a barber. The debut of their new hybrid. Nobody knew. Nobody <laughs> cared. <laughs> Why did they debut in mid Ohio? Yeah, I saw that. They were like talking about like hybrid, uh, you know, how much oh, hybrid dude. power everybody has left. I was like, have they been doing this the whole year? And I just hadn't noticed. Or I'd... I'm just like, oh, okay, well, I guess that's a thing now. And then yeah. yeah, nobody was talking about it. Well, the thing that made me pop, I I I only know this because I watched David Land's video today. And he starts out the video by saying it wasn't really a story all weekend. And then uh, apparently Scott Dixon, like, couldn't even, like, fire it up and start the race. So, like, a championship point leader had, like, a DNF because of the new, the new like, engine regulations. I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, so apparently this new engine screwed over a, a, a championship contender. I, I, didn't, I don't know how I didn't hear that until, like, like half an hour ago. Damn. That's because it's IndyCar. Um, the the cup race once they actually got going was really good because and I've been asking them to do this they let the teams pick which tire to use where they're like hey if you want to throw slicks on it you can throw slicks on it if you want to stay on the wets you can stay on the wets and as they were as sort of the last caution was coming out and they're they're getting ready to go to the end uh, which also based by the way that they said like this time on the yeah, clock dude, we're going to hit so that hot. time and then it's going to be the white flag and then the race will be over um which that was uh, hot that ominous clock that's just yeah, ticking it was dude, cool. that was sick <laughs> but it was really awesome that some guys like jumped in and started taking slicks when the track was like a little bit too wet so some like basically the leaders like sort of felt like they had to react to it so like christopher bell who was in the lead was like oh we gotta come in and put slicks on it and it was not ready for slicks <laughs> and they were just skating out there uh so so they pitted like right before the stage end they run through the stage cycle and some of the guys uh like joey hand like alex bowman stayed out there on the wet tires so they got off the rip like a lot better um and alex bowman that's how alex bowman ends up in the lead but alex bowman takes the lead from joey hand and they're out there on the inters and some of the slick guys in the back are tripping over each other christopher bell biffs in for a second year in a row and then at the very end Tyler Reddick on the slick starts ripping he's going like three seconds a lap faster than alex bowman and he was gonna catch him on the last lap, but he just like booped the, the inside wall at turn four. It could have been like an all time banger. It was still really cool, but I love that like finally we got differing yeah. tire strategy in NASCAR and it was like genuinely it, great. It was about to be an all time classic if Reddick didn't choke it. Like the way he was closing in mm. on that different tire strategy, that was like, I, I, you Dude. start to get, get the goosebumps as it was happening. Like, Three shit, seconds actually, a lap, yeah. like he's <laughs> flying. Oh, it was like right at the changeover point. Literally, if he had one more lap, he would have been there. Which is also like funny that it happened on the same time as an F1 weekend, which had some of the like greatest changing conditions. The F1 race was a total banger as well. Yeah, I actually watched it, the F1 race like in its entirety because it was over with so like an good. hour and a half, and it was. That's just what's so great thing. about European sports is it's like you. It, it's the same with like a. So I've been watching a lot of the soccer recently with the Euros and the the Copa America, and it's like. This is the time when the game starts. In 45 minutes, you get two commercial breaks, and then they stop the game, and then they play to the end, and then it's over, and it's done. Same with F1. It's like you start the race, they have a two-hour window to finish the race. Usually it's over in like an hour or 40 minutes, and then you're on your way, everyone's happy. But NASCAR, it's like, now we're going to diddle ourselves for four and hours even, running these trucks. Even in the British GP, like Ugh. there was like a period in the middle of the race where like a thunderstorm just rolled through and then was gone. Dude. And so now, like, everybody's like, all right, switch the wet tires intermediates well, the, the, to go back to The best part about it shit. was first, like, a little band of rain came through where it got wet, but, like, just not wet enough to put on inters because a couple guys, including Charles, came in and took inters. But then the track, like, immediately started drying out because it was, like, just a little band of rain where just everything got mixed up in the front and dudes were sliding all over the place. And then, like, the real rain came through later, and then we got, like, a full cycle. McLaren horrifying strategy they literally had like three opportunities to secure a one-two finish completely biffed it uh they ended up third and fourth uh, lewis, and is back, lewis hamilton so won beat max for stappen on lewis, pace man. mclaren had it max like Isn't for some like reason just wasn't he's won the fast GP. until the end yeah and no one's ever won nine times at the same track before which is an insane stat uh, and it was like a feel awesome good like Michael Schumacher run around for as long as he did. Yeah, he only won eight times, but he did it at a couple tracks. Dude, nice fruit cup. Dude. 
frozen fruit. Oh mm. my god. You get a little juice at the bottom too when you're done. Mm. <laughs> Uh, good, good race weekend for some changing conditions. Big fan, big fan. I will of that. say, I will say this though, like, and, and like on a dry track, to talk about Chicago NASCAR again. The Xfinity cars put on such a better yeah. show because they're not oh, planting, so dude. Good. They're just sliding around out there yeah. on skinny tires, dude, and, and they're this. actually shifting the things, like. And, dude, SVG, he's using up every single fucking inch, like, getting this fucking close to the wall every single time, because he's used to racing on those, like, shitty Australian tracks where there's no room for error, and you could, yep. like, immediately biff it. This dude, is just a situation so normal wet. for him. <laughs> 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 oh, God damn. Oh, God damn. All right, all right, never keep it moving. I was, I had to, I had to keep it going. Cast title. <laughs> I do love like, that. Every like every time he sends it, you're like, "There's no way he's gonna like not just cremate the wall." Like he somehow makes it stick and makes the corner. Like every single, I, I don't know how he does it. Even like when he got wrecked out of the cup race, I was like, "Oh my god, Shane Vickers, we're gonna make a mistake." Like he just overcooked it and got on the wall. And it's like, nope, he got hit by some idiot. By the way, shout out to both Chase Briscoe and Josh Berry for just. Noah Gregsoning <laughs> the race, and just like every five laps, you just get a shot of one of those Stuart Haas cars buried in a, an entire wall. <laughs> uh, uh, I guess this kind of goes into the news, but a lot of the talk on Twitter today, especially, is about this Bubba Wallace incident where after Bowman won the race, Bubba, who by the way finished like 13th, which for him I feel like is a really good run at a road course, yeah. uh bodies bowman on the cool down lap uh which i thought was a little bit animalistic and i put a tweet about it but all i said was that's why he's like not one of my favorite drivers anymore because he's just a fucking animal um but apparently people are calling for him to get a penalty and uh, yada yada what was he mad at bowman for for he got dumped like two hours ago like, uh, <laughs> like it, when Shane Van Gisbergen got wrecked out, Bowman turned him, and he was mad about that. Like at the end of the race, that that's why I'm like, come on, man. Like I the other the other people are drawing parallels to uh, Chase Elliott got turned on the last lap by Daniel Suarez, which was based because Chase hit him first, and Chase gave him a little like how you doing after the the checkered flag, which is fair. But for like an incident that happened literally f like four hours ago <laughs> and the guy just won the race and you're gonna go put him in the wall like okay okay dude uh wow I, i've dude. said this before bubba wallace one of my favorite drivers except when he's behind the wheel of a race car <laughs> he's just <laughs> he's just an animal i think of him like right rearing kyle larson that one time like it's just for no reason but anyway uh all right, let's roll into the news. Uh, big thing from this weekend, NASCAR finally unveiled their electric vehicle, which we got the leak of like a year and a half ago. Um, I guess I can pull that up. Uh, oh, yeah, hold on. <laughs> One thing I want to talk about first, <laughs> on the ticker wanted to show which tire the dudes were on. And and they just oh, wrote the like slicks or wets in the <laughs> column next to their name, and it just looks like it says sucks. Like, yeah. It just looks like Van Gisbergen <laughs> sucks, Bell sucks, Gibbs sucks. <laughs> oh, that was really funny. Um, but yeah, this yeah, you remember the old the old leaked image from the R and D center of, of this weird crossover mm -hmm. thing. They finally brought it out. Uh, NASCAR said they're going to partner with ABB, who are uh, the same dudes who like helped set up formula e basically um big electrification nerds uh that's pretty cool they showed off the new car they did a few like laps and startups and things uh it's got like a thousand three hundred horsepower and it's all-wheel drive and it's got like regenerative braking it actually looks sick it's based on a next gen but they're trying to get like the small crossover ev category they had these guys lined up the mustang maki the toyota bunch of letters and the chevy blazer thing um and i think it'll be cool run those around do a cute little a little series like just throw 10 of those on short tracks and road courses and i think it would be cool um but yeah people it's on the zero internet are to one pissed. time is like insane by the way dude a thousand three hundred horsepower and four-wheel drive those things are going to be nutty. 
And actually, I just wish they didn't use a crossover. Like, does anybody actually yeah. like crossovers? Apparently, Americans keep fucking buying them, and that's why people don't make cars, cars anymore. Because no one was buying them, and and manufacturers in the U.S. just get such better profit margins selling stupid crossovers. Because everyone's like, I want to shit up high, even though it's no, just because like no, it the same shape as EPA regulations. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. They can use more gas, but it's just a slightly fatter car that can carry less things. Uh, but anyway, I think it'll be cool. It'll be fun Americans to watch. Americans are stupid, and I want us to have trains. All I'm saying uh, is, how are you going to debut this electric car on the 4th of July weekend? This is the most anti-American race car, period. And you're going you're gonna to take away Road America, and then go to Chicago, and then unveil an electric race car. Like, get it out of here. I wish Cody was here to agree with me on this. This, this whole thing <laughs> is a scam. Like, it takes five seconds of research to understand this is a scam. So... It's not for the people, it's just for their pocket. All right, well, I'm look, I look forward to the, uh, the whatever they do with this, <laughs> even if you don't. Um, next well, how, piece how of... Much would, how much would an electric NASCAR EV cost compared to, like, the next gen that we have now? A lot, That's the best probably. part. NASCAR it's based on a next gen. But... You've got to buy it from them, so they make even more money off their teams. Yeah, they basically, it's electric next gen is what it is, where they sort of build all the stuff in-house, and then they'll put a body on it that looks like a Ford whatever or a Toyota whatever. Um, it's apparently it's built by the same dudes who did the, the Garage 56 Le Mans car, so once they were done with that, they started working on the electric thing uh, at the R&D center. Could be interesting. Um, next piece of news... That, uh... You guys see that video from a more perfect union about uh, the NASCAR's failing business model? I was watching that today, yeah, talking about how uh, <laughs> yeah. they're like lobbying the, the Florida government to cut the taxes on their ticket sales at Daytona, and NASCAR just reaps all the rewards and doesn't pay any of the teams anything. It's brilliant. Like, from a business standpoint, it's <laughs> oh, yeah. brilliant. But they, they, need they, to, they, they need to be spend. arrested. They spent yeah. a long time, like, putting all the little pieces together, buying up all the tracks, controlling all the media Everything. stuff. Even, like, the they, new Cup Series sponsorship model where they've got, like, their, like, primary guys instead of just a full series sponsor. Like, it's, it's a well-designed system for making NASCAR money and NASCAR alone. <laughs> Well, it's a monopoly. Yeah. They own the tracks, the cars, the TV uh, contract. They own everything. So if you want to go do your little split, Denny Hamlin, go, go have fun racing in front of 50 people at some shitty short track. NASCAR is going to get all the money, and Dale Jr. is going to hop in and get all these charges for free. <laughs> uh, next piece of news, Haley Deegan is out officially of the 15 AM racing car after having a lackluster year. Now it looks like it's just going to be sort of a rotating door of four drivers. Joey Logano was in it last week. Josh Berry is going to be in it next week. Uh, and it like genuinely might be the end for <laughs> Haley Deegan and NASCAR unless she can like pick up more part time stuff. Uh, the options are limited now. Um, so Apparently she's gonna AM have a, racing was also like a big think this year. <laughs> there were what? There, apparently AM racing was also stupid because Joey was in the car and he was basically having to tell the crew chief what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there well, was like, they, yeah, I'm getting a tighter over time. He's like, well, do you want air, more air in the tires or more air out? He's like, well, I'm getting tighter over time. And he's like, that means I need more air out of the tires. Like, you stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they shrunk. So he, uh, apparently he was year. trying to like crew chief uh, from like inside the car and the crew chief had no idea what he was doing so that might explain Damn. like a little bit of uh, what's going on over there well hopefully having these cup guys in can help them figure things out they were supposed to run a a Brett Moffat car again like they did last year in the 25 but apparently he ran out of money so uh, tough times out there the other um, sort of NASCAR silly season thing going on currently not even silly season like currently uh, Thad Moffat, who drove for that Faction 46 team that popped out of nowhere and was suddenly like, hey, we have the 46 truck and Thad Moffat's going to drive for us. Um, apparently they were being kind of shady and uh, fell out with Thad and now have left the sport. 
Um, hey, apparently, apparently, they had some kind of alliance with Nice, uh, and the but they also like had questionable investment in the sport, and now they're just out of here. Uh, gotcha. So their owner points and their number have been scooped up by Young's Motorsport. We're now going to put Thad in. I'm assuming a truck that'll look like exactly the same because it just looks like a petty Thad Moffat thing anyway. So they, they've been completely silent on social media for a month ever since they like <laughs> stopped showing up to the track. So y'all yeah, talk we'll about seeing, uh, yeah. Hooters leaving. Uh, we, yeah, we talked about that last week. Uh, Hooters last week, is yeah. out. Apparently um, they were just missing payments. So. They're and, closing uh, a lot of locations. They're it's yeah. it's a bad time for yeah. Hooters. It may be Jover. I guess millennials and Zoomers just don't like tits and beer anymore. <laughs> well, maybe they like good beer and good wings with tits on the side. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, last piece of news, uh, along with the, the Silverstone Grand Prix, Apple showed off a trailer of the new F1 movie, the Brad Pitt movie, uh, which will be coming in the summer of 2025, and it will be called F1. Which I think is kind of sick. I feel like if you just go out there and you drop that as a movie title, like you're pretty confident with your piece. Um, and I, I've seen too many NASCAR fans on the timeline being like, that's not a good name for a movie. If you have to, like, that's one, not a good movie name. I think it's based. Some of the greatest racing movies of all time are Le Mans and Grand Prix, which they don't need to have stupid little Days of Thunder titles. Uh, and I but think then it's there's a, just like the last Brad Pitt racing movie was literally just called Ford versus Ferrari. Yeah, and that was it. Yeah, which originally was supposed to have a longer title too. It was supposed to be like my bad. Supposed to be like Le Mans '66 Ford versus Ferrari, but they just shortened it down. I think it's great, and I think it's a show of confidence to how Apple hopefully is just big dick in it. the The shots in the trailer look really nice. Uh, and I think that, like, on IMAX next summer is going to be a banger. Yeah, some of the camera shots are, like, really cool. It's like, oh, shit, how'd they do that? But I was yeah. kind of disappointed that he, the teaser, I know it's a teaser, but I have no idea what the movie's about or anything. It's just, there's, like, one to. line at the beginning, and then I'm like, well, what? what, what <laughs> that one line was kind of cringe, on? but yeah. Um, well, they they took over a car in the Daytona 24, um, that they had out there specifically for filming the movie. Uh, so there's going to be at least some of that in the backstory, which is really cool that it'll kind of reach beyond just F1. Uh, honestly, like my favorite part of Ford versus Ferrari was, was the Daytona 24 scene. Um, and I'm tempted to... Even though it's to like California. Yeah, whatever. I'm tempted to like look less and less at stuff that they put out for this movie, so I'll enjoy it more and more. Um... So yeah, look forward to that. Uh, that was the news. Uh, and yeah, I've that, got... That's what I did with Hot D. I didn't watch any of the trailers or anything. I just went in completely raw. <laughs> mm. That's because that's every trailer nowadays just gives away way too much. Um, we're rolling to some drip or drown. I don't... It's still Monday when we're recording this, so not a lot of paint schemes have come out for next week. Uh, so this will kind of be a uh, short talk one. about saucy nugs. Oh, I, we will talk about saucy nugs, mm. um, among other things. First of all, another backup car moment because Justin Allgaier wrecked his uh, his main number seven, and they wrapped like an all black car. Looks sick. Hot. I, I like it with the corn number. I forget yeah. the reason why he runs the corn number, but it's so based. That's because Brant, corn, what they do. Oh, professional um, agriculture, I see it. Shane Van Giesbergen ran the Wendy's Saucy Nugs car. It's and I sparkly. noticed they Yeah, Trackhouse has been doing this recently. They did it with mm. um, the Tootsie's cars. Uh, they have this, like, glittery wrap texture that they print on and stick on the car. So the Saucy car got, like, some sparkles going for uh, for Chicago. Looks sick. Um, oh, random thing I noticed. First of all, Michael McDowell in a White Sox car, tough. It's admittedly tough. Um, but it's also, I think, the first time I've seen in a while a cup car have, like, White Sox. Like, it's got one sponsor on one side and another sponsor on the other side. Uh, 
skill. I looked it up. Apparently, make like electrical appliances and like lawnmowers and things, power tools. But yeah, they've got like one sponsor on one side and another sponsor on the other, which is interesting. Um, but I guess NASCAR approved it because it looks similar enough. It's not like the colors are different. Yeah, anyway, it still has the white sock on the other side. Yeah, well, the sock isn't even on this side, so it's like totally different. Uh, and lastly, we've talked about this before, but another. Oh my god. Another disgustingly bad Denny Hamlin Mavis tire car has hit uh, the social medias. Uh, <laughs> the World Trade Center. Yeah. <laughs> they have an incredible ability to make uninteresting, uninspired cars that are somehow different from the previous uninteresting and uninspired car. That's all I I've got. I, just, I feel like they were getting better and better each week, and now they're like, you know what? Let's just throw a complete piece of shit out there and get to <laughs> talking about it. Like, this is the worst one that they've come up with. Like, dude, it's so... Dude, I, cutting I, this on the bumper line is so bad. They did it on the previous one, but now they've got this white box because FedEx has to be on white, but they're like, yeah, we'll make the car black for some reason. The number still has three entire outlines. It's... It's How so you feeling bad. about it? Is this the worst one or the best no, one no, for me? No, that, that white C pillar, it makes it look like a cop car and fuck the cops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know how this happened. I don't know who's in charge of marketing over there, but. And this is going to Pocono this week? Yeah. Oh, boy. All right. I'll yeah. Uh, that's. Oh, I got one more. One more dripper ground. Uh, the 44 team NY Racing is still going apparently uh, with JJ Yaley uh, not sure if he's getting paid or not but uh, they're showing up to Pocono with a Ollie's bargain outlet car um, which is just plain yellow with a few sharpie marks on it I guess <laughs> I think it's cute yeah it's like the, uh, Dave Blaney Ollie's car yeah from, uh, Tommy easily... Ball Motorsports back in the day which I think has something to do with NY Racing. I think it's a similar... There's some ties. I'm sure some nerd will correct me in the comments, but... Uh, similar type of team thing going on there. But I heard they didn't pay Greg Biffle. That's interesting. Um, oh. <laughs> can, I, can I make a section for just dumb shit I saw on Twitter this week? This, I guess, has to do with the White Sox. I just saw this... Uh, this tweet of this White Sox license plate yeah. that just says <laughs> it just says F slur. That's God. it. <laughs> which like All right, which one of you was this? <laughs> just imagine driving around in the F slur White Sox plate. Which by the way, the White Sox like white on black plates looks sick. One more thing, I found this the other week and I wanted to show you Slappy, you weren't here. Uh, someone had the oh the, God. the Bucky's jihad flag. <laughs> Uh, which I've already seen referred to as Yeehaw. Uh, and I just thought this was the most you thing I've ever seen on the internet, and that you should probably get that's, one. That's Al Qaeda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, shout out to the internet. Some people are like, uh, I swear to God, if there is a, uh, a Fallout game set in Texas. They need to have like the Church of Bucky's, where there's just like a just like a bunch of people that worship the beaver because that's the, the only thing left is like the gigantic statue of Bucky From outside <laughs> the thing. Yeah, and then it's just like, and then there's like a massive like Bucky's behind it, and that's where like all the food is, and like that's all hail Bucky, the provider, providing us with all the water and sustenance that we need, <laughs> all the brisket sandwiches. Uh, all right, let's let's go to the planet. Come listen to the stories from the track from three people that haven't been to a track recently. Uh, I don't have anything as usual. I didn't. I had an animal on road today. Uh oh. A figurative animal, not a literal animal. Those are the best kind. <laughs> but uh, 
I'm in this like neighborhood. You know, it's it's an older neighborhood, so there's a lot of space between houses. So yeah, it's not uh, super fast and like bunch of trees all over the place. And uh, it's not like a, these neighborhoods now where they come, and they grade everything out so it's level. Like it's just kind of undulates naturally with the terrain and all that. And so I'm like going through here, and um, you know, some people got some loose dogs out front, which is always nice. <laughs> Oh yeah, and then um, I I make a delivery, get back in the truck, I'm taking off, and all of a sudden I see this red Ford Escape like in my uh, side mirror, and I'm like I I see him back there, and he's already in the oncoming lane, trying to <laughs> pass me, yeah. and I'm just I'm just like and he's like way far back there, and I like look forward, clear was my area. Was he allowed at me. least? Was it like a single dashed? Or was it like no, just I, a fully double yellow that he was just r ripping over? No, it's just it residential. They don't get it. Oh, okay. oh, it's just residential. Oh. Okay, okay. With a okay. double yellow line in the middle because it's like... So it, it was it, a double it, yellow. Yeah, because it's this neighborhood's weird because it like connects two other roads. So this is kind of like a major road if you want to cut through the two of them. But uh, I, I clear the area in front of me. I look back. He's already on my quarter panel. <laughs> And just he just did not want to get stuck behind the UPS man, I guess. And then he just <laughs> he doesn't realize there's speed bumps here. And then he just conks <laughs> off of a speed bump. Oh my god! And then like he you know fishtails a little bit and just keeps going. And I'm just like, dude, what are you in such a fucking hurry for? It's six thirty in the afternoon. You're not late for work or anything. Like I hope it was like, well, I mean I don't hope, but maybe it was an emergency or something, but. No, I mean he it wasn't heading towards like a hospital <laughs> or anything. I think to be stuck everybody's getting UPS more track. and more in, impatient lately. I I see it every single day, especially when I'm driving in the morning. Like people just have to, I, I don't know I don't know what's going on. I I'm trying to figure out. There's a spot that I uh, drive on every day where I do get past. It's a double yellow going uphill, and they'll go head on in going up a hill. Hey, animals. And hey, I want to I want to put a camera on the car because there's inevitably going to be a an incident and um i need those internet points you know like <laughs> hey, i'll see it i love you to the front i love me a good dash cam compilation but uh i had that happen to me a lot too like people will see me they'll they'll i'll be pretty far away and they'll just be going at a normal <laughs> clip, 20, <laughs> Dude. 20 20 miles an hour residential neighborhood speed and then They'll see me walking in my car. They'll see me flip the lights on, turn it, turn it on, take off the flashers, and and they'll be like, "Gotta go, gotta go." And then they'll like, just get around the truck, me. like yeah. e even around a blind corner. They're just like, yeah, "I'll yeah. take this chance." <laughs> I'm just like, "Why, dude? I'm starting up. I'm going, bro." The best There's part is animals it's in, out there. It's it's in their own neighborhood. It's not like they're like in the city or something. Like this is their own backyard, and they're they're willing to smoke a kid or a loose dog, yeah. like just just <laughs> just to save it. like thirty seconds of their yeah, life. Not even thirty seconds, like ten seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People are animals. They must be stopped. Oh, um, but dude, but dude, we've got this like one model of truck at UPS. It's a Ford Triton V10 motor in that thing, and that thing will get up and go. Oh yeah, and then like uh, I'll have like one of these dudes like from way back like try to like already go into the oncoming lane and I'm just like nope, and I'll just like smoke them off the Get line. The V10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was just sick. Dude, when we got those Ford Triton V10s, dude. I was just like these things, fuck, man. <laughs> can I can I take a bathroom break on my own podcast? Can you guys fill the air for like two minutes? <laughs> Me and Rusty will talk delivery guy bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll all right so I'll share I'll share my Animal Planet story. So you can probably relate to the slap. Every dog owner is essentially like preemptive. It's not even preemptive. As the dog is like loose and approaching you, they're like, "Oh, don't worry, he doesn't bite. Oh, don't worry, he's a good dog. Oh, don't worry." So an angel that can do no wrong, and <laughs> without fail. They start like showing their teeth and they start their hairs like standing up and they're they're ready to like draw blood. They do that um, thing where they put their their front feet like close together and their back yeah, feet yeah, further yeah. apart so they <laughs> yeah, can jump dude. up at you. <laughs> so I had one uh, about a week ago. Uh and and uh same situation as I just just described. I see the guy, I see the dog and I'm just like, "All right, this I'll just trust him, you know?" Well, I'm bent over at the front step, and I shit you not, 
this dog <laughs> came between my legs and I'm bent over and it lunged up and like snapped <laughs> and I, it dude like, I it caught me so off guard and like that and like I, like the whole trauma the whole situation has just basically like given me like PTSD I've been like traumatized essentially from this but the thing I regret looking back at this whole incident, it was my one opportunity to do what me and Cody talk about the whole time. When a dog <laughs> lunges, you can, you got to catch it, put it like in a headlock and like put it in a sleeper hold and make it tap. That was my one opportunity when it lunged up to like, just, <laughs> just get my hand and like, you know, make the dog tap. But like, I was so caught off guard. The, the, the dog got to live another day, but for next yeah. time, I'll be ready to, to, to put the dog in a, <laughs> in, in, yeah, my, in my, a finishing my, hole. Yeah, my thing is just use like the scanner board, just like a club, just whack it over the head. <laughs> well, like, so, so going forward, it's like all dogs are ruined from that point going forward. Like you can't trust a yeah, single. You, you can't trust another dog on road ever. Did again. you have an like, incident? Ever one tries just, to come at you, you're like every single one that you see from that point forward, <laughs> you immediately treat as hostile until proven otherwise. Dude, the, the other one that made me pop. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> there, were, there was one on. It was actually on a leash, but I I was strategic about going around it. Uh, so the 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 tr so when it went around this tree, the tree kind of like tightened up on it, and it kept the dog kind of at bay. But it was the dog was just like digging, you know, and like trying to just bust through the leash. And it and the and the owner is just not doing a single thing about it, you know, because it's their little baby. It's not going to bust. Yeah. But what what oh, happens? Oh, he doesn't bite. If that thing pulls the stake out of the ground, or if like the the leash breaks or something, it's like, well, I, I'm going to the hospital. Like, like what is <laughs> like? I just can't, man. And it, and this is at like nine thirty in the morning, and like it's like just please, please, like. Like you're ruining it for the entire country, like or the entire world. Just be yeah. a better person. Yeah, like uh, there as a as a delivery guy, there's nothing more terrifying in this world than seeing a 110 pound white blonde <laughs> woman try to hold back an 80 pound German Shepherd or pit bull. <laughs> like you just know, like uh, oh man, if she, if, I, if she's trying to fight back a dog that's just as big as she is, and if if she loses this, it's over. It's curtains for me. <laughs> I've seen a couple of Great Danes, and like, thank goodness, like they've been like the most well behaved dogs I've ever seen. But just imagine a Great Dane that just has like the thirst for blood. Like, like yeah, it's over. <laughs> that is the <laughs> good first, part is that like bigger my, dogs tend to be more chill. Yeah, because they don't have anything to prove. But uh, my my first like year delivering, I was like. This uh, person had their garage open, but there are no cars in there. There's no cars yes. in the driveway. Yes. So I'm, I like walk in there and I'm like, hey, I'll just put this like inside. It's not going to get rained on or anything. And it'll be like right there next to the door when they come come home. And uh, I, like as I set it down, there's a great Dane like in there who has like his little like in like the corner has his like little dog house inside the garage. And uh, he just like unfolds his legs he's like i swear to god like in the <laughs> moment he seemed as tall as i was yeah dude. and he just starts howling and i'm just like throw the box down like oh i didn't mean to do it. i didn't mean to. i just like back up <laughs> and, he, and then he like looks at me just like oh sorry dude you just startled me dude and like and then he just like <laughs> calms down like goes back into his like his little dog house and i'm just like thank god that dog was chill and like not a didn't have like the, the pit bull thirst for blood or else it would have been jover <laughs> i gotta give a shout out to like the really really old like retrievers or labs uh uh like they'll just they'll do like one like warning bark and but that's like their last bark and they just kind of put their head back in the ground and go back to sleep like like it's just like it's so wholesome they're, they they want they, there was like an old spirit inside of them that would have gone after you back in the day but now they're just like dude it's it's cool. Like I'll let you go this time. <laughs> like I, I appreciate the old the old souls out there. Yeah, there was a, there was a one dog in my training route. He was like this old uh, bulldog, but he was big, and uh, you could tell he was old because he couldn't really move around that good. But he would like when he go to make the delivery, he would like post up and like bark and growl <laughs> and 
I found out like he like the previous guy who had that route, he had always had dog treats on him. So I yeah. bought like a box of dog treats. As soon as you gave him a dog treat, you had paid the toll and he would leave you alone. <laughs> he was just there to exact a toll from you and then would just be like he was like, All right, I just want to get my treat and I'll be gone. And uh I had that route a few weeks ago and he wasn't there anymore. And I oh. I, don't, I don't think he's around well, I don't think he's with us anymore, but uh <laughs> I, I remember him. I called him Brutus. I don't know what his real name was, but uh, he was <laughs> Brutus over there at uh, you know such and such on such and such lane. I remember you, dude. <laughs> I got to enjoy this. giving you your toll every day. Does, does your scanner provide any uh, like dog alerts? So like if you're yes, coming up on your yes, next, yes, it's, it's like beep, beep, beep. Scan the package and it'll say <laughs> caution, bad dog. <laughs> oh damn, that's sick. And I then know uh, there's a system for that. Yeah, because if there's a bad dog at an address, you can like go to dispatch and you're like, hey, at uh, 106, blah, 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 can you uh, write that up as bad dog? And you can tell like the problem has been alleviated or that person moved or something because it still pops up like years later and there's no yep. dog there anymore. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then uh, sometimes I use that as an excuse to just leave it by the, put it in like a, yep. a bag and leave it by the yep. mailbox. Cause I just don't want to walk down their long ass driveway. <laughs> and then I just say like, Hey, it says bad dog right there in the system. I don't, I wasn't going to take any chances, you know? <laughs> All right. That was your the actual animal planet segment. <laughs> yeah. Figurative animals. And then we transitioned to literal animals. Mailmen versus dogs. Uh, I guess we can roll into the media check it. Tale as old as time. Even though, uh, <laughs> Slaps the only one who's been up to date with Hot D. Hot he wants D. to say his piece. I just gotta say, like, the ball's rolling now. I thought, we, I, I was concerned because... Uh, it's House of the Dragon, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I was concerned because this season was only eight episodes long. I was like, oh, they're gonna drag it out for three seasons, you know. They they probably could have done it in, like, two ten episode seasons or two twelves or whatever, but... Uh, they're going to drag it out for 18 episodes is what it looks like. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of dithering in the first three episodes. And, like, there's, you know, uh, they're like, oh, I don't want war. Let's try to do a peaceful solution. And, like, there's, you know, assassins in the background, like, yes. just picking people off one at a time. Like, you get to, like, the third episode. And it was like, all right, we, we tried diplomacy. We tried assassins and shit, like. Where are the dragons? Where are my fire breathing boys at? Where what is happening? Like in episode four, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> and hell everything yeah. goes sideways, everything goes tits up. Several characters are dead now. <laughs> and I'm uh That's what the show I'm, was built on. Yeah, and now like I, I just want you guys to know the body count only goes up from here. Mm. Like this is it's just a, a, a war of two kings can only end one way with the death of one and all of their uh, loyal subjects. All right, shout out to House of the Dragon. And also, this so, is, this will ahead, be Rusty. one complete story from the book, or are they like kind of going on their own script? I'm kind of out of the loop on this whole thing. So it's based so, off of uh, the book by George R. R. Martin, uh, Fire and Blood which is basically two historians try to piece together what happened in the Dance of the Dragons, the Targaryen Civil War. And like one guy, I, I think I've talked about this before, but one guy's like a maester. He's very by the book, you know, and the other guy's like the court jester and he's like all sex, drugs and rock and roll. That's what he's worried about. He's like, oh, yeah, this she actually had a, a bastard child with this guy. And like all like all the like details don't really change anything, but it's all, you know, the sex stuff is all that court jester and the maester is also, you know, he, he was, uh, I think he was the grand maester at the time when the war broke out. So of course he's trying to cover his own ass and act like, Oh, I, I didn't do anything wrong. You know, you know, war, uh, history is not written by the victors. It's written by the survivors and the people that lost that still are around, they can still cover their ass. And like, I didn't do it. It was this guy. And conveniently, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, it's, you get a lot of that. And so this is kind of like the definitive answer of what actually happened. And so there's some stuff in, in the show that didn't happen in the books or wasn't talked about in the books. And like now you kind of like piece everything together. It was like, oh, that's what happened. That's why this guy said this. And that's why this guy tried to cover his own ass because I oh, that it makes him look bad. 
And would you know it, like all the people that are the reason they lost the war, they're all conveniently dead now. <laughs> cool. Uh, any other media to check in on? I've been on a real uh, uh, The Smiths kick. There's some music. Oh, yeah. I, for, I I heard it in a Team Fortress 2 uh, lobby. Some guy is just blaring out the Smiths over his headset. Okay. And I'm like, and, and I'm just like, listen to it. I'm like, I like this song. What the hell is that? I look up the lyrics and then uh, I just go down this rabbit hole. I'm just listening to uh, all their stuff from the 80s and the early 90s and like listening to them and then going into listening to uh, like the grunge bands from the 90s. Uh, especially uh, Screaming Trees and Soundgarden and uh, Mud Honey, like you can tell where they got their inspiration from. It was the Smiths, mm. like it, 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 like some of that stuff I would almost consider plagiarism. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just like, oh shit! Like I, I hear like this riff from uh, uh, "Tell Me If You Think That You've Heard This One Before." And I'm just like, that's the scream, that's the Screaming Trees. That's fucking, I've heard that song before. Holy shit! And then, uh, yeah, you could tell where those grunge bands got a lot of their inspiration from. Nice. I could have music on a media check, and I don't know if I've ever actually done that before. I, I got right. one that DT might be interested in. I, I stumbled like into the YouTube rabbit hole of through hiking. Through hiking. Basically, you just walk like, or it's, it's about hiking, like, essentially the Appalachian Trail of the Pacific trail like for months at a time so i stumbled into that partly because i had a buddy that uh did the appellation last year so damn uh, that's hardcore yeah and i kind of looked into just casually the pacific one and it's just straight out of like lord of the rings where you you'll just start like down low by a river and then you got to crest these fucking mountains and then the you watch these people like like vlogging you know and then like the yeah the snow like storm rolls in when you're on the top of this mountain and then and there's like lightning and thunder you're just like up on top of a mountain for weeks like, like come on like come on so like i kind of feel like sometime uh i don't know when i feel like i gotta like tempt it and then like let fate uh like, decide <laughs> like, <laughs> like i, I want to just be the idiot out there that uh that i don't know i i gotta try something like that maybe the, not the whole gets, thing but the guy that some... gets lost on the trail and then is found dead just like six Dude. feet away from the trail again Dude, when, when you, i didn't know like when they tell you there's like a trail, I thought like I, I just kind of envisioned like an actual like trail, like you're just following like kind of a I don't even like some type of well walked on, worn down path. But no, the, no, no, dude, you got to like actually like climb shit. You got to cross rivers you, like it's straight out of like like what you, you did, like the Oregon Trail video game. Like you're going to die out there. And I feel like <laughs> I want to at least dabble or stick my foot into it for like a couple days just to crest one mountain and then like get the fear of god in me and then come home uh, and never do it again but i that's where i'm at that's right now like, stumbling into like this hiking youtube thing and like packing your shit and just trying to survive with like minimal like that's intense I, I i've i've only ever done one like hiking camping trip most of the ones i did were like canoeing ones Dude, you talk about ones. there not being like an actual trail like when i climbed mount fuji i was surprised like there wasn't there was like kind of a cordoned off area but that was just like the least bad path to go up, you know, and you're climbing over rocks that are like three and four feet tall, you yeah. know, having to like yeah, climb up over them and all this shit. And I was like, man, I thought this was like a hiking trail or just <laughs> like Dude. you just walk. I didn't realize I had to like do rock climbing and shit. Dude, yeah, that, that's what happened on, on the big hike that I did when I was in BC, when I was in like the worst shape of my life. It's like you, you climb up and it's like a whole trail and you get up to this little meadow thing and then it goes up and then it's just like. It just turns into just rocks. And yeah. you're like, oh, I have to end up up there somehow. And you're literally like on your like hands and feet, like just crawling over rocks. I'm like, this was a trail and now it's just it's just rock climbing. These things happen. Yeah, I'm glad they had like the yeah, you know, the ropes like telling you where to go, or else I would have been like I don't know, I probably <laughs> would have walked a straight line up there and I probably would have like fallen off and got my head conked on by a rock or something. Rusty, you should be like the uh, that one guy who ran away to Alaska and then lived in that bus. <laughs> yeah, and then was Have like you seen found. That movie? I don't. Think I, so. I've seen the I've oh. seen the pictures and stuff, but yeah, they the made guy a was movie. Just found, uh, like, dead uh, up there. They made a movie about him called Into the Wild, which I think I've talked about on here before, which is sick. 
it's just this dude who it's it's about like a real dude um but it's like obviously a dude playing it uh and he just drops everything and goes to live in the middle of nowhere in alaska sick sick movie yeah but just Didn't he ditching die of civilization he, yeah he like ate one thing and thought it was something else but it turned out to just like completely dehydrate him and kill him uh, i just I, like that makes me think of like how many of our ancestors like figured out like what foods were okay to eat and which ones yeah. weren't <laughs> like trial and error someone had to die for people to find out if like, something was can poisonous. it can't eat this fish like it, it puffs up and it's got all these spikes on it and like well this guy died from it this guy didn't so i guess <laughs> there are certain parts of it you can't eat but can't <laughs> i forget what the guy's first name was uh but his last name was mccannless which is easy for us to remember oh <laughs> so i was thinking yeah. it's really funny okay. Yeah, we put that in the uh, group chat. We're like, Blake, is this a relative of yours? <laughs> he says he gets it a lot. Uh, all right. Uh, let's open some emails. Send in your fucking mail. Wash your fucking hands, slap! Send in your fucking mail. Send them in, send guys. Them in, guys. Wash your fucking hands, slap! I don't give a fuck, man. You better send in those emails at this point. Welcome to fan mail. Fan mail. Fan mail. Fan, fan mail. mail. Fan, fan mail. If you want to run away into the middle of nowhere and eat a poisonous plant, send us an email. Uh, shrimpowerspresents at gmail.com. Send us questions, comments, concerns. We'll read them on the show. Uh, <laughs> this week we have 12 emails. Oh, God, I'm going to uh, bed. <laughs> <laughs> Last week we only got five, so I asked for more. Um, except uh, three of them are from the same person, and there's two other people. Seven of them are from the same guy. <laughs> uh, all right. The first email comes from a good friend from down under, Andrew R. He says, "Morning, all y'all. I'm sitting in Sydney in single-digit temperatures after having watched England beat Switzerland on penalties, uh, and now having seen SVG won the Xfinity race in Chicago. Uh, there's another story which played out where Joey Logano replaced Haley Deegan." Uh, to see if the car is to blame for her lack of performance. Uh, yeah, we know that she's fully out now. Yeah. Um, oh, and he he wrote out the bit where Logano was basically telling the crew chief what to do because he just didn't know. Uh, yeah, so if, if you ever have imposter syndrome, just realize that you could be an Xfinity Series crew chief and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> do just as good of a job. Andrew says, clearly it doesn't help that Deegan is inexperienced, but this team is not just a clown show, it's the whole damn circus. It's true. Shout out to AM Racing, that's tough. Uh, next email comes in from Mark. God damn it, Mark sent me a video file. I'll see if we can watch it after. It's banned, I'm, ban him. Uh, Mark says, uh, ever since the first email I had, uh, I'd been saying I'd go back to I-37 Speedway, Tell you guys how it is, and I finally got to, but we rained out before the heat race is finished. Damn. Average dirt track experience. Uh, it was an absolute bummer because the racing was damn good. Lots of side by side action, beating and banging, guys absolutely ripping it in just the heats. Uh, the scene down here is definitely growing too. Two years ago, they had only like six late models racing, and now the field is up to 20. Great crowd turnout, real friendly people, and no animal activities that I was aware of. Uh, anyways, if I show my wristband from tonight, I'll get half off entry next race, uh, and the tickets are twenty dollars. So no idea if it's a good deal for seven features. I mean, ten bucks? Hell yeah! Uh, I'll be back with more info about the full experience on August third. Uh, and he sent uh, he sent some pictures. Uh, this is apparently all of the dudes entered in like all the races. They line them up in the infield and you just get a parking lot of uh, race cars. <laughs> sick. Looks sick. This dude's got a fucking Dodge late model. <laughs> is that a l asphalt late model body with a Dodge? It does look like an asphalt. Yeah. <laughs> those are those old. Uh, <laughs> they don't make those noses anymore, but those used to run, I remember. On, on pavement, and then this is as the rain uh, rolls through, I'm guessing. Um, uh, and if the, he says this video loads, is to finish to the late model Heat 2. But he put it on Instagram, so it's vertical. Uh, 
Yeah, sure, I'll download this file. He is Watch now just... in control of shrimp hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> He's just taking over fires. DT's <laughs> BC. Uh, while we have a second, did we ever get a life check on that one dude that crossed the racetrack in the four wheeler and got stuck? Oh. <laughs> he, he got up. There were oh, okay. two incidents on Twitter this week. Um, one where a guy on an ATV just ripped it to try and get to a wreck and got T-boned by a race car, which is hilarious. And another one where, like, some, they were running some kind of, like, sprint car qualifying and a, and a dirt late model was trying to, like, get out of the track through the crossover gate and just <laughs> strove onto the track and got T-boned. It's funny. All right, let me see if we have the technology. It's a dot .mov file. It's over. It is. It is a dot .mov file. The, the fix is in. Okay, let's see if I can make it without making it too loud. That's what, that's my biggest concern, to be honest with you. Oh, God. Okay, hold on. <laughs> this shit is side... You said it was vertical, not sideways. God damn it. Can I... Do I even have... Oh, we do have the technology. Hey. Hold on. Hey. Yeah. Dude, them boys are ripping. Shout out. Dirt stuff is cool for the first, like, four hours. <laughs> and then, it, then it starts to wear off on me. It's really badass when you still have the sense of speed, and, and then, yeah, after, like, two hours in between each like, yeah. heat. <laughs> you gotta <laughs> wait for everyone to run every series heat. Oh, that's a good oh, finish, though. Oh, mm. Oh, yo. That's sick. All right, cool stuff. Thanks for sharing. And thanks for uh, for emailing again, Mark. I'm excited to see more. All right, the next email comes in from Keegan. It says, hey, Trimps. I come back the next day after the eve of destruction at Elko Speedway in Minnesota. Hey! Mm, greatest racing I've seen in the five years I've been going and a decent amount of wrecks, which uh, I haven't had a lot of success in seeing. It's based. Uh, the downside is that the school bus figure eight is the biggest blue ball show you'll ever witness. <laughs> I oh guess no. no one crashed into each other. <laughs> uh, my question is, what is a tradition your local short track does? Showing the show and happy two years from Keegan. I'm trying to think of specific traditions that like... I know TMP, like in the I, summer... Local track. In the summer, like, there'll be, like, some random day in uh, August or July. Greenville Pick and Speedway would do Thursday Night Thunder. And it, it it wasn't, like, just, like, an exhibition thing or whatever. Like, they brought in everybody. They had asphalt sprint cars there doing, like, their race. And it was insane to watch something go that fast on that, like, you know, flat half mile. And then they got, like, you know, all the normal guys are there. And, like, it's a points paying race. And it's... Because they're waiting for guys to get off of work and everything, it's it's like doesn't just, like normally we'd start at like six p.m. or something on a Saturday night, just seven p.m. This was like an eight thirty p.m. start on a Thursday night, and that was the most badass shit I ever saw. <laughs> because oh, yeah. it was it was so cool. Because we were like, oh, we get to race in like basically in the middle of the week, and then uh, you know we also we have like this extra touring series here. It's like some pro late model series or asphalt sprint cars and stuff yeah thursday night thunder at greenville Pickett speedway was always fun as hell i know it's not a short track but i kind of consider ctmp ctmp to be like my local racing facility uh plus i kind of like that racing more than short tracks uh, i haven't gone to it yet but they've recently been doing this thing where one weekend in the year they do like it's kind of like a wannabe like goodwood festival well, they'll bring in like a bunch of old cars, a bunch of new cars, like just a bunch of cool cars. And you pay and it's a whole show where they've got, you know, all these dudes parked up and they set up like a, a hill climb track where they start sort of at the bottom of the hill and they go backwards, like, uh, like up sort of the first, I guess, like turns four, three and two in CTMP. Seems kind of cool. It's interesting. I like when uh, tracks do fun stuff like that. Uh, we got another email from Keegan. Oh, it says, On my way to Elko Speedway, I got blitzed by a bright red truck with a racing trailer, and it got about five to seven car lengths in front of us, and both right side tires on the trailer blew up. 
uh, as he was in the left lane of a two-lane highway. Uh, and the pop was so loud you could feel it, and I almost lost my car for a second time. Remember, this is the guy whose girlfriend crashed his car. Uh, anyway, uh, that's a little extra I forgot to add in the email. Thank you, Keegan. And I'm sorry again for your girlfriend wrecking your car. Um, Bill. Fucking Bill. Bill sent us three emails in a <laughs> row. Um, Bill says... This is fucked. Racing in the rain is fucked. Street courses is fucked. Chicago's fucked. Stage racing is fucked. Stage points are fucked. Van Gisbergen was fucked. Uh, about the only thing that's not fucked around here is me. I have jars. Thanks, Bill. Hey. <laughs> oh, no. Um. <laughs> was that your roommate? <laughs> yeah, he's harassing the cats. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Bill sent us an article. Uh, Florida man nearly loses hand after firework explosion on 4th of July. Bill says Florida man is the superhero we need. God bless yeah, I'm not America. surprised. Uh, he chipped his front teeth, broke his wrist, fractured his palm. Uh, he lit a possibly man? expired firework. That means definitely expired. Yeah, definitely. Uh, in 2023, it's estimated that 9,700 people were sent to the hospital from fireworks injuries, with 35% of those being hand injuries. <sighs> Learn how to fire off fireworks safely, or just don't do it at all. It's expensive anyway. It's You're literally burning money. Uh, Bill sent another email. Uh, and That's said, why you do the... Uh, the Chirac special and you just shoot a gun off into oh the air. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, he says, what is pickleball? What the fuck is pickleball and why is it in Boynton Beach? Uh, it's tennis for losers. <laughs> it is like, it, it is kind of like the new white dad mini tennis. Like, just play ping pong or play tennis. Pick one. I don't know. It's probably fun. What was, but... that, what was that other sport where it's like tennis, but you, it's like one sided and it's like two people and they hit squash. a ball up against it. Yeah. Just but play squash. Ball up. Yeah, just play squash. Um, like literally the same thing. Mr. Ass sent an email. He said Chicago was based. Bowman's a fraud, but the Cup and Xfinity series were based. Uh, SVG and Joey Hand are the goats, and Ricky Stenhouse is a dumbass. I don't even know what Ricky Stenhouse did. Uh, I hate being a Truex fan. That's kind of your fault. Uh, but I'm going to stay in this sinking ship until the end. Uh, no Bowman Gray because they don't race on the 4th of July weekend. That seems like a crime. But I guess people need to see their families or whatever. Uh, Carl sent an email. He said, hi, shrimps. Two great races in a weekend. Uh, the first 10 laps of the Xfinity race were like watching two gods do battle. Uh, Cup was something. Uh, give Bowman all the malort he wants. <laughs> Uh, and he sent in a Denny delivers meme uh, describing the the the, uh, the Tyler Reddick worst fumble. <laughs> I guess he could have fucking won that thing if he didn't bop the inside wall. I seen too much Tyler Reddick slander on the timeline. I saw people calling him a choke artist and that he can never deliver weeks. unless he unless he uh, like leads the whole race. Just because he got he got beat by uh he got RFK'd that one time at Darlington like don't don't do my boy Reddick dirty. Well, his resume isn't like even five percent of as disgusting as uh, Chase Briscoe's resume. So <laughs> I did until, see people until pulling he up piles. <laughs> yeah, until he just racks like, up another ten choke jobs, I think he's doing. Yeah, Plus Chase. He's Chase Briscoe has been wrecking a lot of people over the years. I didn't realize how many it was until I see like Twitter compilations of just like just times and places where you just cut to just Briscoe in the wall. <laughs> uh, uh, Carl also writes in, ever wondered what people leave behind on subway trains? Oh yeah, Carl drives subways. Uh, I see the same three things over and over. Nips this of bottles. fireball, natty daddy, uh, and pamphlets about how Jesus loves you. Don't be an animal, and remember to take all your belongings with you as you exit the train. From Carl. Practice good subway etiquette. Don't be a fucking animal. Yeah, I gotta um, practice my subway and train etiquette for when I go to Japan. 
Because mm, yeah. my dumbass American brain sees a train arrive and the doors open, like immediately get on. Don't let people get off. Get out of get on now. <laughs> and I got to like just like decouple my dumbass individualistic American brain and be like, you're not the only person here. Everybody's got to be somewhere. Like, just wait your turn, you know. Those are the worst. Like those, uh, you can't do that in Toronto. You'll just get bowled out of the way if you try to just get on a like bus or a subway when the doors open. Like you're getting shoved aside. People got places to be. Dude, like in New York, it is a Chinese fire drill, bro. There's just like people coming and going, squeezing in between each other. You know, people ready to fight you for that like last spot in there before the doors close. The the thing about New York and Chicago is the same way. Is it, their subway systems are so old that the trains are like pretty damn thin where you're sitting on one side it's, and it's narrow gauge yeah there's a dude sitting on the other and, and... fucking it right now no I yeah, can turn i'm fucking your podcast dude who was it ben showed up a couple weeks ago i was just watching the recording of when when ben showed up and slap was just like ben leave leave <laughs> he just kept repeating leave get out of here get uh, out get out get out i will be retaking my place in the top right though that's that's not reasonable God damn it. Argus, you're top left, aren't you? Yeah, slap should be in my spot. And that's how it usually Hold goes. Hold on, we're going to do a little uh, Chinese fire drill of my own. I'm actually allowed to say it. <laughs> oh, shit. But yeah, them, them things are small. And I, I compare it to Toronto where you feel like you got a lot of space. But we'll still fill up a, a damn subway train. Yeah, the Japanese are actually smart because they figured out, like, hey, the the wider your gauge, like, the faster you can go. And so they made all their uh, subways and stuff, like, wider gauge, and they, they those things fucking haul ass. Like, when they get out, go oh, between yeah. cities and stuff, they could do, like, 70 miles an hour. Dude, I was, watching a, I was watching a video on that stupid Saudi line city that they're trying to build in the middle of the desert. Oh, the wall? The prison? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it is like kind of that, yeah. And how they said they would be able to take people from one end to the other in like twenty minutes on a train, and Dude, there's, there's just anywhere. no like train that can ever even go <laughs> that fast. Like even without stopping, no train has ever gone that fast. And I realized I've actually been on the fastest train like in the world <laughs> in operation. Uh, and it doesn't even go as fast right. as it used to. But I went on it when it was at top speed. Shout out to the shanghai maglev took that bitch 431 kilometers an hour which is oh. some number of miles Damn. i'm looking this up uh that is <laughs> yeah, 267 miles per hour 267 dude. miles an hour yeah that shinkansen in trains. japan that i rode on between tokyo and uh kyoto that only goes like 190 kilometers no 190 miles an hour i think Damn. Three, it goes like Oh just my. a touch over 300 kilometers an hour but it was it was Dude, funny because uh, it was funny because like when i was riding that they had the Watkins Glen race going on oh hell yeah and i was like i probably went faster than anybody in nascar this weekend <laughs> <laughs> it is a crazy Dude, feeling i can't imagine I just hopping on trains. a train and going 268 just like <laughs> almost ripping like 300 miles per is, hour the crazy thing is like fast at all you sit on it and like as it accelerates it's so gradual it's not like it's pushing you in your seat yeah you just sit down it, and, and it you're just, just like it just feels like nothing's happening and it just gradually yeah. builds up speed and well, then, like, like what's like a you feel what's less like than a jetliner's top speed because yeah like i feel like i feel like when like if i ever take off in a plane like you feel it in the well, seat they, for like, a second in a plane like you have to gun it to like get the lift yeah, the force to pull yourself off long, the ground you know? but in a train you just chilling Dude, in the yeah, in the, you're just ripping 300 in the train. You're like, if we hit one rock, we're just fucking flying off the well, tracks and the, dying. The Shanghai one is a maglev, so it doesn't even touch anything. Like yeah, it's just it floating on magnets. So you get in it and you just feel it go whoop, and then you're just What's going the emergency unbelievably brake like fast. On that thing? Like, yeah, how does a maglev train stop? Yeah, like how, how do you how do you get uh, it uh, down? It sounds like a dumb question. I know it obviously does stop, but like, how I does think it, it has. Do it? I think it like in the rails it has magnets that like rotate poles to like propel it along and then when it slows down it just like sinks it differently. It just slows down the rotation. Yeah. Yeah, what if you have like the trolley have problem with the, with the have the air brakes and stuff on it? Probably. I don't know. 
This was a long time ago. I mean, I took this quite a few times because it, it's this project that like they were like, oh, we're going to build a maglev all across China. It's going to be great. But they only ever like built it like one stop that it actually operates where it goes between the Shanghai airport and like kind of like the eastern downtowny part of the city. Yeah, they're uh, building one in Japan uh, between uh, Osaka and Tokyo because that's the most popular Shinkansen line. Yeah. And they, they're building a new line. And it's like ultra straight like just the straightest line possible they like, the... went through an entire mountain range yeah that's the like, problem build. with it it becomes really expensive to build um, yeah. and you, you like like it's just so much it makes so much more sense to just run high speed trains especially if you already have rails down we... which is why maglev have a... ha hasn't really been like a thing to take off everywhere we have a tom scott video on this exact subject about a year ago so we're yeah in japan it. i watched yeah, yeah. that also, the uh, Shinkansen, when it's going, it's booking it like 200 miles an hour or whatever, and it has to hit a turn, they're they're banked. So, like, yeah, they, bank they have the to whole, be. The, the whole rails and everything, like, you, like, feel it, like, in your dude. seat a little bit. And, dude, it's sick. You're ripping the banking going 500 kilometers per dude, hour. Dude, the maglev does the that, train. too. Yeah, and then, dude, dude, like, between, like, uh, Kyoto and Tokyo... There's like fucking nothing. There's like a bunch of farms. There's the uh, Kirin uh, brewery, and that's it. And so you just like see all this farmland just like zipping Dude, by. The American mind cannot comprehend what no it would way, be dude. like to get on a train in like New York City and be in Chicago in like half an hour and just zip past all this countryside of nothing. Who invented oh. the, the highway system? We need to go back in time and assassinate him. Uh, uh, Eisenhower. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! All right, uh, Hitler. Hitler invented the uh, the uh, what do they call it over in Germany? The Autobahn. Autobahn. Yeah. <laughs> it was originally for troop movement, so they could move shit back and forth uh, from one end of Germany to the other faster. Uh, anyway, while you look that up, the next email comes in from Luke. Uh, says high shrimps absolutely phenomenal race at silverstone with changing conditions great battles throughout the field and lewis getting his first win in three years uh also very little animal behavior in dc uh other than some girls at the fireworks talking about being addicted to peeing in public <laughs> yo <laughs> can we, that's a thing can that we move you on talk can, we, can, we, can we just can we just move on uh, he says also Slide tons of wants more information. <laughs> he says also tons of trains the DC metro is based. Oh, Hell yeah, yeah. Dude, the DC the, the DC subway, that was my first ever exposure to like public transportation and it was so based. Like I was like holy shit. Like this is like I have like an underground city where I can like stop by shops on the way to the train, get on the train and just be wherever I want to be without having traffic or anything. It was like this is Base. Dude, it's great. I'm, I'm like, I'm yeah, a if you ever played, train if you ever played Fallout 3, uh, and you like have to go, like, in order to get anywhere, you have to go, like, in the subway and, like, navigate the subway, like, walking from one end to the other. And I'm like, are there really this many fucking subways in uh, DC? And then, like, actually go to DC when 2012. Yep. It's and I'm based. like, oh, this is fucking badass. I don't even have to deal yeah. with traffic. I don't have to deal with any of this shit. I just, like, that was like, I get on a train and I teleport somewhere else. You know, this is awesome. <laughs> Aren't there? That was, like... the, that was the moment I took the blue pill was when I was stopping oh, yeah. by the like just walking down the stairs. And I was like, oh, shit, I forgot something. And there's just a fucking underground CVS next to the subway with everything I could ever need. <laughs> it's like, this is base. There's only like four decent subway systems in the US. I'm pretty sure like you literally have. DC, Boston, Chicago, and then New York City, my beloved, which has a fantastic subway system. New York oh, subway Marta, is so good. The Marta system in Atlanta is not that bad, actually. Like, right. if, you're, if you're trying to get around, like, Cumberland, uh, Buck's Head, and all this other shit, like, it actually does a good job of, like, getting you into, like, city center Atlanta, where uh, Phillips Arena is, the Georgia Dome, all that shit. Like yeah, unless you're big... walking up the Georgia Dome, and then it's the worst spot possible. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like most Americans' idea of, like, public transport is just a bus that gets stuck in traffic and is yeah, full dude. of, like, stinky people and just sucks, which <laughs> is kind of fair because most buses are, but... 
trains on tracks that don't get stuck in traffic incredibly based yeah and then you if to add an extra layer of baseness you don't buy the stupid subway credit points you just hop the barrier and get on there for free <laughs> <laughs> you that's what you do, do that in, shit in new york you can't do that shit in japan dude they in new york you have the uh the like emergency gates shit in the way. so they'll have one guy like hop the turnstile and then he'll just from the inside just pop open the emergency gate let his homies through and then just ride the train <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, all right, we got uh, two more emails. Uh, this one comes in from Nick Man. It says weather report: Vegas saw a record high of a hundred and twenty degrees yesterday. Oh fuck! I went outside for three minutes around the time of the record, uh, and that was all I needed to see. With that being said, what is the hottest day you have ever experienced? I'd have to imagine there's a whole lot more humidity involved. What with the Midwest. Uh, and south um side note i want to give a quick shout out to the national weather service vegas twitter account for conducting an experiment with crayons out in the sun i'm sure you could imagine how it's going oh my god this is kind of sick actually they th they just why is caleb in 144 p right now the they put a back. bunch of crayons on this doing. on this sheet and then the heat just melted them down into a cool Jesus. little rainbow the hottest oh, i don't know it's hard to remember the hottest i've ever experienced because when i was in the south of china in the summer it was unbelievably hot but i think it only ever got to like 40 celsius um, which is really fucking hot. So I'm gonna do the math on that. But uh, you said forty. Yeah. But in that's one hundred four uh, Fahrenheit. There you go. I, I talked about this Ugh. before, but in Iowa last year, in the middle of the fucking bike ride, the heat wave rolled through and it was obnoxious. It was, it was thirty eight. Feels like forty two, which I think is like a hundred and eight Fahrenheit. And I had to fucking right. bike 80 miles. Ugh. Ugh. I went, I went and stayed with my grandmother one summer in Nashville. And they had a crazy heat wave move through. And I think the high was... I think the temp was 109 and it felt like 116, which is... Uh, hold on, I still have the calculator up. Uh, 46 degrees Celsius. So, yeah, it was, it was toasty. I almost died. Uh, I think it was Atlanta 2014 road trip down there with the boys to go see Tony Stewart's return to the racetrack. And uh, I remember that being about as hot as it gets. But I then I went. The and then I went to uh, Bristol in 2019 with all the YouTubers. And it was the, oh. it was the, the night race. And we had, uh, <laughs> we had passes to go inside the racetrack. That's the first time in my life where I actually felt like I was getting cooked alive inside the bowl at Bristol. And this is pre-race. And like, I, I, I'd never had like heat stroke symptoms or I don't even know what that was, but I've never been in that condition before. And I, you could, you felt like you were actually getting cooked alive inside the racetrack. So that's yeah. That's during during the day and like the middle of like the Bristol it's all asphalt. It's all concrete. Then you have all those aluminum grandstands radiating heat back down onto you. You have the heat from the asphalt coming up at you. You have the sun coming down. <laughs> like the only thing I could compare that to was uh, when I worked uh, uh, air conditioning maintenance at uh, the GE plant over here in Greenville, where they have like this white, uh, not a tarp, but like, this like vinyl linoleum, like white flooring, basically they put on the roof and the, all, like the, all that heat would come down off the sun, reflect right back up at you. And it was just, it was like everywhere is hot. The, even the shade was hot. <laughs> the shade did hardly did anything for you. It was just humid, hot as fuck. You know, it, it just, you, you just feel like you're cooking the whole time constantly drinking water and that's you're just not keeping up with your body's like hydration needs you know you're drinking like six liters of water and gatorade and stuff and you're not even pissing because you're just like sweating it all out <laughs> you you got to be careful on those like big white surfaces in the sun i i was 
watching a podcast with uh, Landon from Laserbeam, that Australian guy who has like a billion YouTube subs. And he, he like, he was like doing like concrete installation or something. They'd have foam down um, as they were working and the sun would just bounce off the like white foam. And he like damaged his eyesight, just his eyes getting cooked <laughs> uh, from just the, the UV, I guess, just bouncing right into the, like the underside of his eyes. It's bad news. You're right. Your Atlanta story reminded me, Rusty, uh, earlier that year in uh, 2014 was my first ever experience at the Brickyard. And I dude, think it was like, oh. it was like, I think, dude, I, yeah, I think it was like late July. I, I think it was July 31st that that race was on. It was the one that Jeff Gordon won in the yep. Exalta car. And I remember it being literally the hottest fucking day I had ever experienced. It was, there's something about the Indy in late July. Yes. It's like yeah, just ready to die. I completely forgot about that. I think it was the, 2006 one i went to with my friends and like i had a buddy that like literally almost died out there that was probably <laughs> that was probably a brickyard 20 or 2006 if it's hot be careful kids <laughs> it's like just mind ah, your body because i saw so many people keel over in iowa on those hot days like you gotta just <laughs> mind your like like if you're not conscious of your own body like you're gonna run into trouble drink water sit in the shade Fucking take it easy. And if you feel bad, yeah, people, people, like, sit in the shade. <laughs> That's it. That's, I mean, the amount of people I've seen projectile vomit at NASCAR races, it's only two. It's not like, worth it. It's still too many. It's too many. Like, you need to drink water, like, go easy, stay in the shade. It's not, you know, it's I, don't know, I don't know how the Schaefer boys survived, Caleb. Like, you remember the Schaefer boys just like knocking back Schaefer's and fireballs? And it was fucking hot. <laughs> yeah. It was like 90 something degrees. They were and, like, in we're, the we're sun, too. They, yeah, they were in yeah. the sun. I got a yeah. picture, time. dude. It was the fucking the Schaefer boys. I've only ever seen one person projectile vomit at a NASCAR race, and it wasn't from the heat. <laughs> <laughs> the brain stain. Brain stain, yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Uh, imagine, imagine throwing uh, your fucking brains up because you wanted to go watch Justin Allgaier crash for fifteenth in the fucking Xfinity <laughs> race, dude. I'm like, what are we doing? Uh, last email comes in from uh, oh, it's another Andrew R email. Uh, who says I figured you might need these if we want to update the Rusty Fifty Nine car. Thank you from Andrew R. And he sent in uh, this is actually really useful. Individual versions of those uh, those little drawings he did for episode. Oh, 90 yeah. something uh, which are still like like genuinely <laughs> fantastic uh the ben the Dude, Andrew knees, R is the hype slap. about rusty I, I posted a thing about core and uh, he was like he replied to it with like let's go rusty nation hashtag rusty nation 59 oh yeah like, rusty Dude. do you want me to make you a street stock uh i don't fully intend on racing the summer season Damn. Okay. You let me know. Wow, Look at General, dude. by the way, for the Schaefer boys. Oh, yeah. I know we've shown the picture before, but just for, for old time's sake. <laughs> <laughs> the sheer number of cans and the little, like, little nip bottles. God damn, dude. That's these were like, these like, old, years. These were like old boys, too, man. They were. They just went in. They didn't give a fuck. Dude, yeah, they were they were Jesus Christ. Past their prime. That's, sick. But that's still crazy that they were they were putting that down. Yeah, they were in they were like more lively than me, Caleb, and Ben up there. And <laughs> yeah, we were we were getting rowdy by the end of that thing. Don't don't discredit us. Yeah, once once the sauce hit, we were getting a little bit rowdy, but they those guys were hitting <laughs> the sauce early and hitting it hard. God. All right. It's been a pleasure. Oh, uh, what? We this thing? Yeah, what the hell do we call this episode? Rusty's getting wet. Yeah, the one thing I have written down is it gets me so wet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So if anyone can think of anything oh, better, you better say it context. now. Yeah, I like I like it just gets me wet or whatever that, that was. I think we got shadow banned on our title last week. That was tough. <laughs> I don't think YouTube algorithm no, was a dude, fan of Down day syndrome. Three, day three we, we came alive. Is it doing alright? We're uh 
We're only 20 views off of tap waters for beta males now, so. Okay, that's not bad, especially for like a Friday release. Or I think we, yeah, we've just overperformed the last few weeks because we had episode 100 got like 400 something and then we've been over 200 the last two. So we're yeah. just coming down to earth a little bit. Uh, if this comes out before Wednesday, which it may or may not, Wednesday night core twitch.tv slash FTF underscore GG. Come watch us we'll race. Be there no matter what. Um, make sure to buy your hat, your shirt, your diecast from shop.shrimphub.cool. We don't actually have diecast, but check it I out. I got my shrimp hub stuff in the mail today. I didn't get it out for you guys. Uh, we'll show it off next week. Yeah, I still have my... I, I'm waiting on my frames, but I got my box. There, mm. there you go. Hell yeah. All right. I got my triangular poster box, too. Bye. Mm. That electric vehicle looked like shit, Steve Phelps. Fucking kill yourself. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs>